Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Artist Loft uh, drawing class. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I know we've got a lot of new folks joining us tonight. So uh, welcome. And if this is your first time joining, this is a weekly reoccurring class. It typically happens at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time on Wednesday evenings live and then the class recordings are posted to YouTube the next day. So if I go a little fast or you miss anything, you miss a step, you can always uh, just wait for the recording and go back and, and play it play it back starting tomorrow. You can find it on YouTube. And so we have free classes and then we also have premium classes and you can sign up for the premium classes in the same place that you signed up for this class today on the Michaels website under online classes. They might be listed a little separately under premium, but I believe they're all together now. They separated them and then I think they put them back all on the same list recently. Um, but the classes that I have coming up are, I thought I'd go ahead and mention tonight's classes on, it's called Flower Fundamentals, Drawing Datura Flowers. We're going to be drawing the uh, mysterious and whimsical flower called a datura. It's a, a nightshade flower, so that means it blooms at night, and then during the day it closes up into this fun little twisty um, tube shape. So we're going to be drawing all the different shapes that uh, the datura uh, takes on, all the different forms that it takes on today and breaking that down uh, into kind of a diagram and then looking at the contour lines and the, the value or the, the shading that goes along with uh, drawing this particular flower. And then next week on June 8th, we're gonna have a class uh, very similar to this one called Flower Fundamentals, Drawing a Rose. So I'll be doing the same thing with a rose. And then on June 15th, we've got a class on blind contour hand drawings, and that one is free as well. Uh, so the next two weeks of classes are free. And then on June 22nd, um, we've got a premium class on drawing the uh, Artist Loft wooden mannequin hand. And all of these classes are using the Artist Loft brand uh, supplies. And then in July, the July class is already listed. We've got a really fun series on uh, landscape drawings, but I won't list all the classes for the next um, seven weeks ahead of us. I just thought I'd give you a preview of what's coming uh, the rest of the month. So I'll go ahead and switch to my tabletop and we'll start talking about uh, the supplies. Very simple supply list tonight. All we're using are the Artist Loft uh, drawing or sketching pencils. You're going to want uh, a full set with the H and B pencils. So with the, the letter H and then the letter B's on them as well and a, a few different numbers. So you're going to want um, to use Probably, we'll probably use all of those in, or at least, you know, some H's and some B's. Um, here is, and then we'll, you'll want a synthetic eraser or some kind of eraser. You'll want some drawing uh, paper or drawing pad or sketchbook. And then the reference photo photos, there were three of them for the class were included on the supply list. So I've got all three of those printed on one piece of paper here. And if it's kind of hard to see uh, the details of my reference images on the screen, then that's why I um, included those reference photos in the supply list. So you can pull them up on your device to reference or if you didn't get a chance to print them out before the class. Uh, and then here is some of my personal work. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can go check out my uh, also very whimsical and ethereal work that I do primarily using calligraphy ink. I'm Adrian Hodge Art on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. And it's easy to find me. And I think Chanel probably dropped my link tree in the chat. She is always very helpful in doing that. So um, you can find me pretty easily online. Uh, and then don't forget to tag your work with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes if you post anything on social media tonight or even later if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can still uh, use those hashtags. And if uh, you really want me to see it, then you can tag me at Adrian Hodge art because sometimes there are so many of those hashtags that um, they get a you know things will get a little buried 
um, if you go, you know, if you follow that hashtag, there's a lot of things because Michael's offers so many different variety of classes. Um, but if you tag me directly, then I'll be sure to see your work because I love to see it. Um, okay, so, and also we have a very special guest in the audience tonight. My daughter is attending uh, the class, so I'm happy to, to see her little emojis popping up in the chat. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and dive in here. Uh, you maybe will not have a fully completed drawing of a Datura flower if you're just following along with me tonight. So I always like to manage expectations with all of my classes about what sort of a product you might have at the end of the class. We're really gonna be breaking down the fundamentals of this flower and discussing it. So we, we're gonna get in there and like really look at some details like in the, the center of the flower, zooming way in here at the middle, which I realize that photo is maybe not quite as zoomed in um, in the printout, but if you have the digital version of the image, you can zoom way in on that center detail there. And that's what I was doing um, here. Um, and likewise, with, uh, with all of these little diagram drawings, uh, you're going to want to be able to zoom way into the photo. So if you um, are just kind of going off of my printout on the screen, you're not going to have quite as much uh, detail to observe because it all comes down to observation and what you're, you're looking at in the photograph. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, grab a pencil and just do this, this little pinwheel sketch together. So we're going to break down just the, the fundamental shape or form that we're seeing in this Datura flower. And if you uh, look at, so we're looking at the center of gravity. And this is very similar to if you've been following along in all of these classes, I I do this with a lot of different things, but primarily with figure drawing, um, we talk about this, the, the center line of gravity or where the weight is on a figure or the gesture of a figure. But, um, you know, everything tends to have a certain weight or a center of gravity, and especially flowers have that. And it's pretty obvious where that is on most flowers. It's usually right in the center where the the pollen uh, of the flower is. Um, so that would be our kind of center of gravity is this circle in the middle. And then we've got this pinwheel spiral happening all around it um, as it, it goes around. So we're gonna draw that first. And I'm using a um, 4B pencil. I'm gonna use a much darker pencil then you maybe will choose to use. And I'm just doing that so that you can see my lines on the page. So we wanna develop a little bit of a muscle memory here for the shape and form that we're seeing in the flower because I've been teaching drawing to all ages for a really long time. And there's something that a lot of people do when they are first starting out drawing. And that is, and this goes for kids and adults and uh, seniors, oftentimes we want to get to the part where it's done, where we're observing the finished product and we've drawn this flower, right? And we can be really impatient with the process that it takes to get there. So we want to start out really slow and just develop just a muscle memory for the overall shapes and forms that we're seeing. So I've got this movement happening. I've got this circle at the center here, and then I've got these little arrows pointing. So I'm drawing these curved lines, and they're all curving towards the same direction. They're making like a pinwheel or what a fan might look like. They're all pointing in the same direction. So we're drawing something like that first. Hey, Adrian, sorry to interrupt, but can you repeat what kind of pencil you're using again? I'm using a 4B, but I'm only doing that so that my lines will show up nice and dark on the screen. Um, I've noticed with teaching on Zoom here for a while that uh, if I use a lighter pencil, 
it doesn't show up on screen quite as well. Um, but you should use uh, maybe a lighter pencil so that your lines are easier to erase. So I'm only using a darker pencil so that my lines show up dark. So you don't always have to use the same pencil as me, but I'm using a 4B. Okay, then I'm going to do some dotted lines in the middle there just to show this. Uh, we're trying to understand what the elevation is doing on, on the flower. So it's not flat, it, everything about it is sort of curved. We're not looking at something that's got straight lines fanning out. We've got, um, I'm sorry, I'm having, getting a little distracted by the chat. I'm gonna make sure I can not see anything that's popping up here. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we want curved lines going all the way around and you can maybe put some arrows at the end of those curved lines. So the whole point of this diagram is just to get acquainted with the, the overall uh, center line of gravity and weight and the elevation that's happening on the flower. So that and that's when the flower is in full bloom. So when I took this photo, it was actually uh, very early in the morning. So the bloom was still open. Um, but as the day goes on, the uh, the flower will close up like this. The datura flower will. Um, it might or it might have been late at night. It was probably early in the morning when it was still still open. So just looking at the, the sunlight that I'm seeing in the photograph. Anyway, okay, so when we apply that to this, which we're going to draw this next, you can see how I've still got those, those curved lines showing how it's kind of curving up and out. It's coming out from the center a little bit like a vortex here or a tornado because it's kind of everything's getting sucked into the middle like a black hole, right? So another way you could kind of think about that or illustrate it is you could do, I like to do this little doodle sometimes of a, a tornado like this. So if you did that little sketch of a tornado, then our center line of gravities that we just drew would be, would look like that, right? From a different direction. So in the other, I didn't actually put uh, this, we're not going to fully break down this one, but I just, you know, included that in the reference photo, reference photos in case anybody wanted to draw it from a different direction. But from this direction, we're looking at the same vortex shape, but we're seeing it, you know, from the side, right? So this is it looking at it head on, and this is it from the side, our little vortex. Okay, I'm going to flip to a new page and we're going to start drawing the, the inside of the, the trumpet shape here. So I'm going to start out with, a, I want you to start out with a lighter pencil, like a 2H or a 4H, and I want you to keep your lines really light, like in this this drawing, it, my lines are so light, it's kind of hard to see some of them, right? So I want you to draw that light so that it's easy for you to erase your lines. And if you are very brand new to drawing and you've um, never heard of these H and B pencils before, you might uh, check out the first class in this series and Chanel can drop the, um, the link to that YouTube video on, um, on YouTube of Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms. So that should be in, in the chat and then you can watch that and that will tell you all about the H and B pencils where I break down what those letters and numbers mean, um, why you should use an H pencil when you're first sketching and how you should hold it to best be able to erase your lines and all that. We actually even did two versions of that class. So if all that is brand new to you, then um, you might want to check that class out, but um, don't go away. You can still watch this one and then, you know, check that out later and then come back to it. Um, but that'll be helpful if you're feeling a little lost. So uh, 
we can even start out with that same sort of diagram. You could draw that same little uh, pinwheel thing just to like get yourself started here. And I know that I just drew that so light, you can't see my lines. I'll darken them up in just a second here. But after I've done that, I'm going to start to look at the shape of the shadow that I'm seeing on the inside of the, the center here. And instead of drawing that circle for the, the center of the datura, I'm gonna draw the shape of the shadow that I'm seeing. So it's a very organic shape. And in these classes, I like to ask the audience, what does that shape resemble to you? So looking at just the dark green and it kind of fades to light green. What sort of a shape are you seeing there? I know I'm seeing a pretty obvious shape, but what shape does the green resemble there? A star, I see Pamela said a star, yes. So I'm gonna draw a little star shape here on top of my pinwheel sketch. I want to make sure that the star kind of falls in between my pinwheels in all the right places that I'm seeing in the photograph and that one little leg or point of the star, the shadow goes out really far into this little pinwheel spiral arm, spiral arm. So it gets stretched out like that. And then in front of that, we have the um, oh my God, what are they called? What's the, the pistol of the flower? So I'm gonna do some skinny double-sided lines in the center for the, the pistol of the flower. And I'm really just gonna kind of block that off and just leave it alone and shade around it. Cause we're not gonna get super detailed in the center of the flower here. We're gonna do a little detailed study off to the, the side. Um, we'll see how much time we have for that, but hopefully we'll get to really get into that one. I'm gonna kind of bounce around this whole diagram page and we're gonna draw this one. Then we're gonna talk about the, the how it looks when it's all closed up and then the, the center and we'll see how far we can get in our hour here. Okay, so we've got our star shape in the center. And then out from that, we've got a few more shadows that are kind of coming out from our, our star shape. So I'm looking at the, the mid-tones on the shadows and what shapes those are making. And I'm really letting those shadows guide me around. And I'm not worried about the edge the outer edge of the flower yet. I'm just looking at the shapes of the shadows and the shapes of the light. And my favorite thing about drawing like this, kind of doing a study of a subject this way is that it takes the pressure off of you to have a finished product. If you look at something as a study, then you're just studying it. It's a diagram. You're making a diagram. Some details are uh, gonna show up within our diagram, but mostly we are just mapping it out and gaining an understanding of this flower. And as we're doing that, I'm noticing, you know, it doesn't perfectly follow that uh, spiral shape in that the all of the spiral arms at every point don't curve in the same direction. This one actually, um, curves kind of back in the other way. So these two curves are kind of facing each other right here and right here. Um, and feel free to, if you've got it printed out, you know, you can draw directly on the flower and notice what the elevation is doing. And this is very helpful for what we're gonna do next. Drawing directly on the flowers. So we've kind of got a bit of a mess that does not look like a datura yet. We're just drawing our shapes of our shadows. Okay, and if it's helpful to put those dotted lines in there to understand where the, the elevation is, is curving and happening and those arrows. I just love a good diagram. I don't know about y'all. 
if you go check out my artwork, you can see how many scientific diagrams I put in my work, but I also find, uh, you know, any type of drawing diagram extremely helpful. You can make your own diagram out of pretty much any subject. And then you can see I also put those little arrows from the center coming out as well. So you might do that as well. So I did like this little line. It's definitely going to feel a little messy, but we'll put some some details in here so it doesn't feel purely like a diagram in just a moment. But even those little arrows are kind of coming out in this starry pinwheel shape right now. Okay, and then we can take that one step further and really notice some of these dips and curves that are happening here, like right here on, if you zoom in on that photograph, you can see how this part is raised up and everything on the side of it dips down and everything on the other side of it dips down again. So it's sort of like a little mountain range that I'm seeing here. So that is right above the pistol. We can do a little kind of mountain, like a bridge going across right here. We're gonna to start to put these contour lines in now. So it's like a little fold in a sheet or like a little mountain range. And on either side of it, you've got a curve down in this direction and then a curve down in the other direction. And then above that, you've got the little space for the, the top of the star. So we do have quite a few layers going here. And then the same thing over here on the other side, um, opposite to that, there's a little bit of a curve up. So how do we know that it's curving up? People who are really focused and observing this photograph along with me or who know what to look for, how do we know that this is curved up right here? What do we see in the photograph that tells us this part of the flower is at a higher elevation than this part of the flower? What's happening right there and right there? Yes, the light, I see Hillary said it. So there's a light, the light is hitting it more directly right here. So we see more light than shadow um, on this part. So it's subtle because we're looking at a white flower. It's really easy to look at this. And you know, if I were a very beginning painter, I might just take my white paint and just fill in this whole thing with white. But if I really got in there and looked closely, there's several different colors that are happening, not to mention um, there's a lot of variation in the light and shadow. There's a gray, there's a lighter gray in the lighter shadows, there's a darker gray in the darker part, there's this dark green, but then the green gets lighter, there's kind of a creamy color right here. And um, where we see the light is, where we see absolute white is where it's raised up where the elevation is higher. So that's the top of our mountain, right? And so we can draw that using those contour lines and start to get an idea of what the elevation is doing. But I feel like this is getting a little lost right now with all these different diagram lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add some of these shadows in just to give it some weight so that it's not too confusing since I know that we read lines and information just like we read letters in a book and right now you might not be reading this as a flower but when I start to give you a little more visual information like filling in this shadow then you're going to start to read it as the the form and the the object or not the object the I don't like to call plants objects because they are living things they kind of have not even kind of, they are sentient and aware. And I think the Datura flower is so spooky and interesting for that reason, because it doesn't follow the same um, 
you know, patterns that other flowers do. So it's awareness of the passage of time and it's little, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Our, in, you know, internal clock is set to a little bit different um, thing than the, than the rest of the flower. So it, it definitely has a, a consciousness and an awareness very fascinating documentary I just watched the other day about the awareness of plants called aware you should check it out a lot of neuroscientists and a lot of um like psychology based botanists out there doing some incredible work with plants proving just how aware they are uh so yeah, it's not an object. It's a, it's a bit of a person here that we're drawing. So I forget why I went off on that <laughs> tangent about the awareness of, of flowers, but just to make you recognize what it is, the more I put that, that shape in there, the more we're gonna start to read it. So I'm just filling in the value using a different kind of pressure based on uh, how dark it appears to get in the, the photograph and since we're putting this level of detail in on top of this diagram that's why maybe we'll not get to the part where we we really uh hone in here but you might kind of do this on the center this is just like you know a zoomed in version of what you could be doing here if you took the time but i want to make sure i touch on every aspect of this this flower form so I might not get that far with the, the detail aspect of it. Okay, so now we're starting to feel the sense of flowerness, I think, by putting that, that shading in around the negative white shape of the, the pistils that are sticking out. And there's one really long, beautiful, pistol that kind of follows a different path than these other ones. It really comes out like to here. It's got a nice little tube shape to it as well. So you might put that in. So as we're adding this value, you want to let up on your pressure for the lighter value. You might switch to one of your H pencils as you let up on your value and use the side of the pencil and you're following the path of those contour lines that we put in. So we definitely put in quite a few lines and I didn't want to get us too lost in there. So I kind of stopped, but we can add even more lines here that show us where to put the value. So it's honestly a lot like a spider web of contour lines. We're really getting that vortex of, of contours going. And the contour lines are every line that you see on the surface of the form. So it's not just the um, outer lines, but every line that tells you about the surface. Okay, and then I wanted to make sure I talked about what's going on at the edge of the flower because it's just so cool and whimsical um, to overuse that word, but it does this beautiful little, uh, like the, you know, the end of an ice cream cone, how the ice cream kind of tapers off and like gives you that thin little uh, creamy question mark shape. That's what's happening at the end of all of our arrows that are pointing out. So if you did your sort of pinwheel thing, your main pinwheel lines that you, you put on there at the end of all of those um, that, that we created in, in the early stage of this, we're gonna put a little bit, I'm gonna move my paper just so I can do them one at a time. I'm not gonna draw the rest of the edge of the flower yet. I'm just gonna to go to the edge of my, 
my pinwheel lines, those first pinwheel lines, and do a little bit of like this little tip of the ice cream shape. And if you want, you can go ahead and start to sketch the, the rest of the flower and it's just going to curve kind of out. So it's really going to make a, a circle when you're done. The circle is just going to be interrupted by these, these little shapes. And we're going to get into those in more detail once we do the this version of the, the flower when it's closed up, because that's when you can really see what those little twisty ends are doing. Okay, so any questions about this? I guess the one thing I didn't mention right here was this little V shape that's happening where it's kind of uh, like bent in one place. There's a little bit of a V shape, so that's just putting those details in there, or maybe if the, the petal had like a little hole in it or something or some imperfection in that very first class on using the apple to draw uh, basic forms like this, I talked about how don't, you know, ignore those little quote unquote imperfections because those can really give your drawing personality. So if there's like a little hole in the flower petal or like a little weird bend like that, putting that in there can just really give it a personality. Okay, any questions before we move on to the closed up version of our Daterra? Um, there's not, not really any questions we do have. Rihanna asked, how many lines do you need? Um, I don't know if you wanna explain that a little bit. Um, there. I guess I can count the number of the main um, little, the, the pinwheel shape that I did here. So, I mean, I drew just one line to mark where the little, uh, little center moment to each, um, I don't know how you would label this, but if we're talking about the little curly Q part, we can count those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so then I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, so I had the same number of kind of original pinwheel lines to match the number of the little um, question mark twisty moments that are coming out the end. Okay, and I used those as my original lines, but then the number of lines that I drew in the middle, um, I sort of just, yeah, fill, filled in the space. So there, there's not an exact number. I'm just looking at where it's raised up and where it's dipped down. So if it's raised up, um, like right here, I did this uh, arcing line that shows a curve in the upward direction. And then if it's curved down, then my line is curving down. And when you add your value on top of that, your shading, when that goes in on top of that, then it, you know, you're following that same dip and curve. So you're putting your shading in like right here. If I start to shade in this area, I can see this shadow right here. There literally is a curve up right there. There's sort of this shape. So if I just shade in that whole shadow and I make my shadow follow, my, make the shading that I'm adding follow that curve, then I'm creating this optical illusion of three dimensions for the person who is observing it. Because anytime you're drawing, that's what you're doing, right? You're creating an optical illusion on the page and the person is reading the information that you're giving them and they are seeing what it is based on the information that you gave them. So if you tell them that you're looking at something that curves up right here, then they're going to understand that that's curved up. So I wanted to break it down like this because I am very aware, like I said at the beginning of the class, a lot of people 
we'll just try to draw the whole thing, but not really observe all these little parts. And they can tend to get really impatient with the parts. So if you're finding yourself getting impatient with each individual part of this, then it's going to be more of a struggle. But if you can really slow down and just, you know, focus on what is the elevation doing in this one little area, okay, and then move on to the next area. And sometimes I find even zooming way in on the photograph itself. Uh, on the phone, I like to draw from just reference images on my phone. If you zoom way in on that pistol, then you can really notice what's happening here. And I'm just going to talk about this since I'm afraid I'm going to move on to the other part of the flower and not get to talk about this detail at all. Um, this is where your H pencils are really going to come in handy. And what I did here was um, probably got a little carried away with my H pencils just being like extremely soft and just like a baby's breath touching the page right here. But if you want to do a little version of this where you really notice uh, every little line and curve, you're still you're doing the same thing we did on this one, but you're just really slowing down and looking at the details and leaving the paper blank where you're seeing absolute white. So that's on the, the pistol themselves are really white, but then around that I'm using either an H or a 2H or a 5H or a 4H, one of your H pencils. So the higher the number is, the lighter the pencils are gonna be. And you can really get in there and just make that, that value super soft, but you're still following the curves of everything we just talked about. And you're using the side of the pencil so that you can keep your shading nice and soft and continuous like that. Okay, now I want to talk about this one and this is probably going to take us to the end of the class here because there's a lot going on on the, um, the opposite during the, the day when you pass a datura flower and you're seeing it closed up like that. Um, any questions before I move on? I think we're good for now. Okay. All right. So um, I didn't do this on my other diagram, but I want to do this uh, before we start. It's kind of similar to the little tornado doodle that I just did. But let's all draw a cylindrical tube. So um, we're just going to draw this shape to start. So it's a cylinder that's going to like taper off and get smaller on one end. So it's like a little trumpet shape, right? This would be, or like a tube. If you took a piece of paper and rolled it into a tube where it was skinnier at one end, you would have something like this, right? Okay, so we've got two different axes here. We've got the, uh, this axis. I'm going to call it the horizontal axis just since it's on its side. So it's kind of radiating out here. And then we've got the uh, vertical axis, which is curved. So and it gets wider and wider curved. And then in the center, we've got just a little spiral like this. We're going to start like that and just like a center of a cannoli. Do like that. Okay, that's the basic shape that we're, we're working on here. So we've got a tube that is a cylinder. It gets smaller at one end. And that's just exactly what this, the, the underlying shape that we're looking at here. And if you drew directly on the flower in the photograph, you can see that same thing. So you can figure out all of these things on your own just from observation and looking at the basic shapes. If you've ever done any of those uh, intro drawing books on like draw 50 horses or draw 50 dogs, you know, they all kind of do this where like, what's the underlying shape on that bird or that dog or that horse. So for this, it's, it's a cylinder, but it ends up making a bit of a, a, a tube, right? Cause it's 
it appears to be smaller in this direction. And then in the center, we've got this spiral. I can actually erase that because that's going to really be distracting to me a little bit as I try to look at the details here. Okay, so that's the the what I'm going to draw underneath on the next page. Um, and then we're going to put some some more details on top of it. And if any of this is confusing or going too fast, I uh, saw somebody say that in the, the chat just then. That's when you might want to go check out that intro to graphite and drawing forms class where I break down everything I'm talking about here, but I do it with a much more simplified subject and apple. And that might be a little bit easier to follow. And we've got uh, that class also tells you all about the H and B pencils and uh, the best, all the things that I'm kind of skimming over here uh, with the, the way that I'm applying the, the shading. Okay, so I'm using uh, an H pencil to get started here, and you're probably not going to be able to see my lines, but I'm just drawing the exact same thing I just drew on the last page, but just as a a precursor as my like under sketch or my under drawing here. So just to help me find this form, I'm gonna draw that, that trumpet shape again. But now I'm gonna look a little more closely because there are, there's a lot of information, a lot of visual information happening around that spiral. And so now all of these little um, twisty moments at the end here, they're all closed up, right? So they're all spiraled on top of themselves and they've got these really lovely little stringy curly cue things happening. And I actually drew one of them off to the side right here so that you could really get a sense of what the contours are doing on each individual one. So um, if you want to draw one of them off to the side so you can see what that little, you know, cream, whipped cream top thing might be doing at the top of your ice cream, it's uh, basically this double-sided curved line that gets skinnier and skinnier and then comes to a rounded point, a little half spiral there, and then but it's flat on one side. So it's not a curved line that wraps all the way around it, it's flat. So that's how I illustrated that it was flat was on the kind of inner lip of it. I drew these contour lines to show you how it is flat on that side. And then I added the shadow right there to, so that's what we're about to do right here as we add all of these. So we're going to do that first. I'm going to add a few of these little. And honestly, don't worry about it looking exactly like the Datura flower in the photograph. If you can even just get these basic forms down, and if it just feels anywhere near close to the three dimensions of these shapes and forms, I would call what we're doing here a success. Because I recognize that it is a very complicated form, especially as we get into this aspect of it. Okay, and they kind of take on some different shapes here. Like this one kind of looks like a number three. I'm just kind of floating them on top of my my tube shape right now. And if you're doing that with an H pencil, then it should be easy to erase any lines if they if something gets away from you. It's like the top of a court jester's hat. How else would you guys describe that? other than how I'm describing that form there. Anybody else got a, a nice descriptor for that one you'd like to throw in the chat? This one is a bit like a cursive letter E over here, it folds on top of itself and then does that action.
We got lasso, horns, thorns, hooks. That's good. Yeah, those are all great. Okay, and then at the center of this, it really is a spiral, but if you get in there and look closely, you can start to see like where these continue to wrap around. It really reminds me of a cannoli. The more I got in there and looked at it, I just kept thinking cannoli. So, um, but if it helps to just, you know, start with that sketch of a, a spiral in the center, do that. And then you can sketch on top of it where you're seeing these double edge shapes and lines. And if it's still confusing to you, then you can always rely on the value on the shadows. If all you're doing when you're drawing is simply observing what the shadows are doing and trying to match those shapes in your, uh, in your drawing, then you're going to get pretty close to something that resembles that optical illusion you're trying to make on the page. If you're following the contours and you're matching the value, you're gonna get close enough. Okay, and then right here, it wraps around and does like a little triangle shape line that goes across our whole tube. And then there's a couple of green shapes, a couple of double-sided lines that we would shade in green, maybe if we were using some colors. And again, we can put all of those contours back in on top of this. I was just worried all those contours were maybe throwing some people off, but I'm going to put them back in now, actually, now that we've, we've established our overall form. So I think it's really helpful. And that's how I like to break down a lot of things that I, I draw in this drawing series. And I find most people really appreciate it. And yeah, if you draw it right on top of the photograph, it helps even more. Okay, but now let's focus on what the light is doing. So like I said before, it's a white flower, but then there's all these creamy colors. There's some green, there's some other shadows happening. What well, the fastest way to make something appear light on the page is to notice what is dark around it and then shade everything around it dark. And then by default, all of the things that are not shaded dark will come forward. So pretty much everything in this photograph around the Datura flower that's closed up here is very dark green and there's a lot of dark shadows. So I'm just going to take my 6B pencil is what I have in my hand here and I'm going to start to shade really dark in the spaces in between some of these little twisty moments. I'm using the side of my pencil to fill it in and that's just going to help the lighter stuff come forward here. And that's what I, I did right here in this drawing. So I just sketched everything and then I put a bunch of shadow shadows around it. So I'm using the side of my pencil so I can fill it in quickly. I'm keeping it nice and soft. I'm not going too far away from the flower. I'm just staying near it. But as I do that, that makes the flower itself start to come forward, right? You can do that over here as well. Next week when we have the class on drawing roses, this idea is going to get mentioned quite a bit because I tried to, when I was doing the rose diagram, isolate just one rose petal at a time. And I realized you really can't draw, it's hard to draw one rose petal and make it look like a rose petal because the rose petals get red 
as a rose, when you see them all together, when, you know, one rose petal casts a shadow on the next rose petal, it's hard to isolate one rose petal. That really goes for a lot of different flowers and a lot of different subjects that drawing or what's around it, if you can, you know, nail the, the basic shape and form of that flower and then just shade around it, you're probably going to make the form of the flower come forward just out of that, that negative space of shadow around it. So that's what I did there. And if you want to go ahead and extend it and put that little stem into it, the stem also has a little curved cylinder shape to it. Okay. And then we're just going to get in here and just look at what's happening in the center here a little bit. What are the, the shadows in the center? And hey, there's our pinwheel shape again. Rotating out like a little pinwheel. And all of the shadows inside of there kind of line up in a similar way when you look really closely in that photograph. Take my word for it, I spent a lot of time staring at that photograph. So I'm just kind of drawing this diagram from my other diagram right now. But it, it follows that path. And then you can really see how each one of these individual um, sort of spines, that's the word I was trying to think of earlier. The pinwheel shape is sort of uh, curving out at the spine. And the spine, I don't know if that's how you would actually label the petal of the flower, but they it feels like it has a spine, right? And all of these spines have the little twisty moments at the end. But when you stack them all on top of each other and they make this little cannoli shape, you can still see the spines are all wrapped up together like this. It reminds me of the sand monster in Beetlejuice too. Okay, um, so yeah, these individual ones have that same sort of shape that we're seeing here. So they kind of radiate out from like, maybe like a Christmas tree right here. I'm gonna sketch it off to the side. And think about like when you make a Christmas tree out of Christmas lights, how you might do something like that. That's what the, if we were to add a little curly cue on top of it, that's what the ice cream cone thing is doing. Does that make sense? I think so. I think that's a helpful diagram. And then we got our little trumpet. That's the, the whole basis for all of these forms are, are doing a similar thing. Okay, where are we at on time? Oh, we're five minutes away. Okay, any questions about anything? I think I've covered everything. I know my drawings here definitely have a lot more um, fine, fine tuned things happening to them, but I think I touched on every aspect of these, these diagrams. But, and if there are any questions left over, um, you all can join me on Instagram for my Q and A. Um, at Adrian Hodge Art, you just go to my Instagram page and then you should see the live. I'll start it about five minutes after this class uh, ends about 7.05 p.m. And my daughter is gonna join me for the Instagram live. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, if you wanna hop over there and ask us any other questions about this drawing process um, or any of these classes, but I'd love to see your uh, drawings and how far you got with these diagrams and these studies. So if anybody would like to hold up their drawings and show us and then we can see if there's any questions I can answer before the end of the class too. Chanel can spotlight you if you hold your drawing up. Oh, look at that. Hi, Sarah. I recognize Sarah, one of our regulars. Oh, yes. Look at the, the, the twisted up one, the, the closed up. That's here, very convincing, love it. Very nice. Oh yes, look at that. I'm definitely getting a, a sense of the elevation on, 
on the both of them. Oh, yes, look at that detail and the, the value um, that you added really makes everything come forward there on the pistols and yes. Love it. Oh, hold it up one more time. Oh, I think you just put it down. Here we go. Oh, look at that soft value. And yeah, I can see those elevational contours. Beautiful. Oh yes, look at that. The value just makes such a huge difference that when you added those dark shadows, it just makes it come forward so much. That's lovely. So yeah, hopefully you guys will keep drawing and you know have some more fully developed ones. Oh, I love that. I love a full page of notes. The aesthetic of that makes me very happy. Oh, that's just gorgeous. Yeah, if you share that on with me or on social media, I'd love to see it. Very nice. Oh, the center of that one is really convincing how you did the little pinwheel on top of it. Yes. Yeah, keep going with that. That's off to a great start. Nice. Yeah, I love how loose your lines are as well. That's nice effect. I think maybe Chanel's looking for somebody else to spotlight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm answering questions at the, at the same oh, okay. time. <laughs> um, well, I can answer any uh, questions as well that, that are jumping out at you, unless they're more uh, housekeeping questions. Oh, look at that. Oh, love those <laughs> yeah, ones. one was just for the recording, but we did get a question for you. Is the paper textured or smooth that you were using? I am just using the Artist Loft uh, drawing pad here, so it is, um, it's pretty smooth. It's a little thicker than the, the sketch pad paper. Oh, look at those soft lines. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah, I'd love to see more of these that are more fully developed like that based off this class. I know we, we kind of stuck to the diagram aspect of these, but I'd love to see uh, some more developed versions of them if you tag me later. Sometimes when people don't, very nice. Yes, I love how you push the, the shadows around it. It's coming forward. Sometimes when you guys don't actually share them, I, I go back into the YouTube and like just take little <laughs> screenshots because I just like to uh, look back at them. And that one's a little blurry. Hold it back. I think it's a little too close. Oh, nice. There we go. Yes, very good. And the open flower is very strong as well. Kind of getting lost in the blur somehow there. Very nice. Yeah, just keep going with that, that value and that'll push the, the flower forward. Okay, well, it is seven o'clock. So I'm gonna go ahead and say good night. Thank you all for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next week for the flower fundamentals drawing a rose class. And if you wanna join me on Instagram live in just a few minutes, um, I'll be there answering any other questions you might have about this class or, or this uh, Artist Loft series. Thanks everyone and have a great night.